This foreign currency exchange rate video is the first in a series of three. In this video, I will show how to find exchange rates for several different currencies using Yahoo Finance. I will illustrate a Python script that downloads foreign currency exchange rates for a long period of time. These rates will be downloaded and saved in a CSV file. This will allow us to see the movements and exchange rates which will set the table for deeper analysis in videos 2 and 3. Let's look at the example of exchanging US dollars for euros. As of today, one US dollar can purchase or be exchanged for 0.89 euros. Likewise, one euro can purchase or be exchanged for 1.13 US dollars. Foreign currency exchanged is known as Forex, which means foreign exchange markets. Several exchanges exist where different currencies are bought and sold throughout a given day. Here is the Yahoo Finance page that shows the euro to US dollar conversion rate. Notice the symbol which is EUR USD equal X. The exchange rate is expressed as one euro purchasing how many US dollars. The symbols for all of our conversion rates must be acquired before we can build our Python script. Here are the abbreviations that are used in this project. For example, NZD stands for the New Zealand dollar and GPB stands for pound sterling. Likewise, MXN stands for Mexican Peso and ZAR stands for South African Rand. Here then are all the symbols that are used in this project. Notice sometimes the US dollar is on the left side of the symbol and sometimes it is on the right. Many of the symbols involve currencies other than the US dollar. If the US dollar is on the left side of the symbol, then it refers to the amount of another currency that can be purchased with one US dollar. Now that we know all the symbols, the next step is to retrieve the prices from Yahoo Finance. Python is used, and here are the libraries that we must import. They include Pandas, NumPy, Y Finance, which stands for Yahoo Finance, Date Time, Time, Requests, IO, Matplotlib for the visualizations, and then we define a start date and an end date so that we can retrieve all the prices for that range. This Python code is used to build a list which is called symbols. Each of the foreign currency symbols is listed with single quotes around them and is separated by a comma. This list will be used later as we retrieve all of the foreign currency prices. This is the Python code that creates a data frame and inserts the exchange symbols, dates, and exchange rates for the entire time frame. Because it is a loop, each exchange symbol is appended to the data frame until all of the symbols and exchange rates have been accounted for. The head method facilitates listing the first rows. In this example, we pass the value 100 to the method, so the data frame dot head with 100 displays the first 100 rows in our currency's data frame. The tail method displays the last five rows of data by default. If a number like 10 is included in the parentheses, then it will display the last 10 rows. Here, the currency's data frame is set equal to the currency's data frame utilizing the reset index method. Looking at the results up here, notice this first column is a list of integers starting at zero and incrementing by one. The previous iteration of the data frame had the date column as the index. 
now the index is default or this list of integers. Depending on the situation, it is critical to understand what column is the index, whether or not it is the default. Oftentimes, only one or two columns are needed for analysis purposes. Indeed, the adjusted closing price, date, and exchange symbol is all that is needed for the analysis that we will do. The dot drop method allows us to drop the open, high, low, close, and volume columns. We set the currency's data frame equal to the version where the unneeded columns are dropped. The currency's data frame that is listed now includes only these three columns plus the index. Notice that the data frame is set up so that the closing price is one column and then another column is the name of the foreign currency. To effectively compare prices between foreign currencies in Python, it is necessary to have a separate column for every foreign currency along with the price. To do this, we must transform the table. This is known as rotating, transforming, or pivoting the data frame. The method that allows us to do this transformation is called pivot table. Notice that the currency's data frame is equal to a version of the currency data frame that has now been pivoted. The new table has an index on the initial column of date. There is a separate column now for every different value of names. The value listed at the intersection of a date and a currency name is the exchange rate for that date. Take some time to look at the two different versions of the same table to try to understand what pivoting is accomplishing. This concludes our first video. To review, we identified several different symbols for foreign currency exchange rates. We made a list of these symbols and built a Python script to retrieve data for a specified time period. If we want to run the script at any different time in the future, we can get the most current data from Yahoo Finance. After we retrieved the data, we made several adjustments to the data frame to include only the adjusted closing price, and then we rotated the table so that each different currency is its own column title. The next video begins various types of analysis done on the exchange rates. This concludes our first video. To review, we identified several different symbols for foreign currency exchange rates. We made a list of these symbols and built a Python script to retrieve exchange rate data from Yahoo Finance for a given time period. We can run this script anytime in the future and modify the begin date and end date to retrieve the needed data. After we retrieved the data and inserted it into a data frame, we made several adjustments to the data frame to facilitate future data analysis. The final data frame included only three columns, including the date, adjusted closing price, and the foreign exchange symbol. Lastly, we rotated the table so that foreign currency exchange symbols became the new column headings and the exchange rates are at the intersection of the date and the foreign exchange symbol. This will facilitate deeper Python analysis that is illustrated in our next video. Mm -hmm.